Does she have to follow us? Drayana asks. She's got us. We can't just leave her behind. So what are we going to do? Take a giant detour and bring her back to her fancy royal people? It's our asylum, Dray. Our asylum. He says it as if it's Disneyland. They start whispering to each other so I can't hear what they say. I follow them deeper into the vault. It doesn't look like there's a lot of obvious treasure in here. No glittering stacks of coins or heaps of golden goblets. There are a lot of portraits, though, framed in beautifully carved wood. I look around and see a lot of woodwork. Some jewelry boxes, some framed mirrors, even wardrobes. Many of them are encrusted with gems. Draped here and there over furniture are long fur coats. One of them catches Drayana's eyes, and I can see that she wants to take it with her, but it's far too hot to wear a fur coat. They continue looking around, whispering to each other, pushing over everything to see what lies beneath. At one point, a hidden man jumps out with a large axe, but Drayana slices his neck as if it's second nature. I hold my own neck protectively as I watch him go down, blood spurting from behind his fingers as he tries to keep it in. She starts tossing mirrors and headboards over her head as if they weigh no more than a shoebox. Wolf has to dodge some of them, and I stay behind at a safe distance. So, little girl, Drayana says. I take it you have met the Arasilian royal family? Yeah. What are they like? Well, they're all very good looking. They laugh at this. <laughs> and they're pretty polite, I guess, but the king drank a lot at dinner. Drayana laughs. <laughs> the Arasilian king getting drunk in front of her serene divinity? Anyone else? Wolf asks, and Drayana elbows him. Ow! And that alone makes him double over. Anyone else? Well, there's Jace. The Crown Prince? Is that what they're calling him now? Drayana spits. I hear he's quite a dish. Is that true? Oh, yeah. <laughs> they laugh again, and I feel blood rise to my face. What's so funny? How about- Wolf starts, but Drayana elbows him again. Ow! She rises from a pile and holds a baseball-sized dark metal orb. She places it inside of a jewelry box, then drops it inside a black cloth bag. Now we just need the stone. What is that? I ask. They pass me for the exit. None of your business, Drayana says. Wolf and I climb back into the cart, while Drayana switches a lever on the tracks, then runs and jumps into the cart. She holds onto the edge, her legs in the air like a gymnast, then she flips inside. <clears throat> I watch her wide-eyed, then realize I'm staring, and I look away. Her cat eyes are cold. So, I say, you guys treasure hunters or something? Treasure hunters get themselves killed, Drayana says. Wolf sighs dramatically. Ah, may their souls find peace in another life. Drayana rolls her eyes and slaps Wolf in the forehead with the back of a robotic hand. Oh. Now he looks like he's going to have a migraine. Maybe they're thieves, but at least they aren't trying to kill me. I should probably keep my mouth shut and not annoy them, in case Drana wants to use her knife on me. While huddled in the cart, I look at a robotic arm. Despite all the blood and use it must have seen, it gleams as if new. Impressed? Drana says in that strange, slightly robotic and seductive voice of hers. She raises her arm and twists it to show me the buttons and switches on its surface. This is what helps me win the championship of the Tariq tournament every year. It's very cool, I say. Cool? Uh, it means neat. Yeah, impressive, whatever. Cool. Is that what you kids say in our style these days? It's what we say in California, but I don't tell her this. Wolf almost leaps at me with excitement. You should come to the Tariq tournament. It starts the last week of Hermes. Hermes is September, I remember from what Jace told me. Uh, okay. I say, not sure whether I can smile or if it's okay to make a promise. Where is it? <laughs> In Tariq. Drana scoffs, as if it couldn't be more obvious. I don't want to ask them what kind of tournament it is, but the way Drana admires her arm, I have a feeling it involves lopping off heads. What, have you been living under a rock? Drana says. I wasn't born on stars? Wolf looks at Drayana, as if he's waiting for her permission to gasp, but she just curses. No wonder. I hear her mutter, 
She turns on me with her cold, scary eyes and shouts, Then what are you even doing here? Do you want us all to die? I curl away from her. I... I don't even know! She groans out of frustration. <sighs> what, so you came here like now, right? And you're just a kid! The cycle has already started, and do you even know what you're doing? No, I don't! I snap back. But if someone actually told me, maybe I would. Drana smothers her face with her robotic hand and shakes her head. Ugh. Oh lord, and we have to babysit you? I stand up, then realize it's dangerous with the cart moving, but I'd rather not be below her. Even when both of us stand, she's still a lot taller than me. You don't have to. I say. I can find my own way back to our asyl. I'll leave you alone once you stop this cart. Trey! Wolf says, widening his eyes like a puppy. Stop being so mean. She tosses her hair and crosses her arms. Fine. She looks at me and snarls. Sorry. Let us at least find you a ride back to your frilly kingdom. We can't just leave you to die out here. Everyone will hate us. She eyes me up and down. Now sit. I'm the only one allowed to stand. 